I, I kind of have an, a little bit of a unorthodox background because I have always, I'm a cyber threat intelligence researcher for the Equinix Threat Analysis Center. And I have been doing cyber threat intelligence for about three years now. And uh, before this, I worked for a UK cyber threat intelligence vendor. Uh, and before that, I was in university. So I've kind of had a little bit of an unorthodox background. I just went straight through from school, university, straight into the industry. So ever since I've been doing it, I've been really enjoying everything, everything about uh, CTI and uh, security research and, and analyzing malware and tracking APT groups and ransomware groups. Um, and I've sort of begun to broaden uh, what I do and start uh, getting involved in trust industry intelligence sharing trust groups um, and doing some volunteering for uh, causes and organizations, as well as uh, uh, developing my own SANS course as well, um, uh, cybercrime intelligence. So people use OSINT in cyber threat intelligence in their daily work uh, for doing, you know, monitoring the threat landscape in general. A part of being an intelligence analyst is uh, part, a big part of it is doing this sort of collection aspect of uh, being able to identify uh, new threats and and, bre and data breaches and attacks and anything that may be a threat to your organization. So you have to be really sort of in tune and have your finger on the pulse and plugged into what's happening day to day out there in the wild, basically. So a, a big part of of CTI is using the open sources to compile all of the information together and sift through it and prioritize and uh, escalate things as well. So it's uh, as well as, you know, sort of news articles or blogs or research being published. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's anything that's openly available basically. So as well as, uh, you know, have like podcasts or even reading books and things, it's, um, you know, very comprehensive. Uh, side of, of, of what I do is the, the research side and tracking threat groups. And I, if there's a threat group who, you know, may target us or has targeted us, I want to know absolutely everything about them. So I'll go through everything that's ever been put out there about them and sift through it all and uh, compile a, basically a report on that threat group. So uh, as well as, uh, as well as that sort of research aspect of my job, I will also begin to identify uh, personas and um, you know different aspects of different attributes of a threat group so I will begin to if I can find a persona I'll begin to basically try to pivot on that username to figure out their other profiles on on say underground forums or social media profiles um, I will basically try to pick up every different attribute I can about a threat actor uh, and be able to build up a sort of dossier on them. And uh, all of this involves using OSINT to, to build, build up and create basically a digital, digital footprint of that threat actor. Um, yeah, I mean, OSINT just is, is an everyday aspect of, of what I do. I, I use multiple tools that, that can basically plug into different data sets and data feeds. And, and whenever uh, someone in my team or someone in my organization wants me to look into an indicator of compromise, like a domain or an IP address, I will use our sort of data sets that are based on open source information, as well as sort of premium, um, you know, uh, feeds and things uh, to pivot on that information as well and, and help decide and act on what we're going to do on, on with that indicator of compromise. An interesting story of, of how I used open source intelligence what, um, probably one of my favorite examples is uh, what we call the Conti leaks. So in, in February this year, 2022, you know, Russia invaded Ukraine, and uh, one of the one, one of the main Russian ransomware groups uh, had a sort of someone who had infiltrated them from Ukraine, and sort of to, when the Russian ransomware group came out and said that they support the invasion. Uh, so one of these Ukrainian uh, researchers had sort of published every single uh, message that this uh, ransomware group had ever uh, sent inside their sort of internal chat logs and things. So um, me and a team of researchers uh, from Curated Intelligence, we had about a quarter of a million messages 
that had been uh, sort of scraped and published via Twitter. So the first step there is we used uh, we used OSINT to detect uh, you know a new data leak basically, and then we sort of uh, compiled all of these messages and began to sift through it all. And it took you know many months to go through it all, uh, and every time you know they mentioned an IP address or they mentioned a, a username or something like that, we would we would we would be doing uh, we would be pivoting uh, to see where that IP address had been mentioned elsewhere. So a lot of the time it was uh, sort of a Cobalt Strike uh, command and control server, or it was a username of someone in the chat logs, and we could go and find. Uh, where else that username had been used. So on GitHub or on forums or uh, in other data leaks and things. So it was a really, it was a massive, uh, op, uh, basically research challenge that we took, probably one of the biggest ones I've ever done uh, so far. And, you know, there's so much information to be gleaned from these leaks and and, and put basically the internal uh, organizational structure of a Russian cybercrime organization that was generating hundreds of millions of dollars a year by launching ransomware attacks. So the fact that these internal messages had leaked, it just gave us so much, uh, so many sort of leads to go and pivot off and uh, basically learn more about how this ransomware group worked. And, um, you know, if we were fortunate enough to be, be basically uncover the persona of one of these ransomware operators, you know, we basically, again, made one of these digital dossiers and, you know, we sent it off to law enforcement. So hopefully they're tracking them down a bit better as well. <laughs> so it was a really, uh, a really awesome project. And, um, well, yeah, one of the most interesting things I've done. And I, I was fortunate enough to be invited to um, the Nordic Financial uh, Computer Emergency Response Team's annual conference. And I presented it there in, um, in Denmark uh, at this earlier this year. So that was, uh, yeah, really an, another awesome opportunity to sort of demonstrate, you know, our OSINT skills. So the way I developed my OSINT skills today, um, I've, so as I said, I've been doing this for about three years in industry. Um, and then before that, I had basically very, you know, briefly gone over it in, in like university modules and things. But yeah, it's the way that I basically got good at it was basically practice makes perfect and trying testing things out as, as often as I can. Um, I, I read and listen and watch as many much material as I can about OSIN. Uh, conference talks are always amazing. Books, uh, some sort uh, one of the interesting things that I always, I always enjoyed was um, whenever I would listen to something about um, some sort of red team engagement, they always had like a reconnaissance phase and they would always give some sort of tips and tricks and how they would... Uh, scope out the organization before they actually would go and launch the attack. I was always interested in the sort of reconnaissance phase and that was always the probably one of the most interesting parts to me is how they, the way they think, they know how to, they know what information they want so they, uh, to start with so they know what uh, to sort of look for. And that was, and, and, and they revealed their different techniques of how they would do that and that was always really interesting to me. Um, yeah, podcasts as well, you know, you know, books, podcasts, conference talks, some of my favorite ways of learning. Um, another good way is basically integrating with the community. Um, I, I am a big, uh, I was a big fan of um, the sort of OSINT community on, on social media sites. They would often uh, share tools or techniques or um, challenges and things, and I would get involved in that. Um, and uh, another big one was the Trace Labs Capture the Flag. Uh, it's a global search parties. They were always interesting to me. Um, I would get, you know, some of my colleagues uh, from SciJax. We would uh, work together as a team and, and compete in uh, Trace Labs and um, the Many Hats Club as well. Um, it was all all good. Uh, it was a, it was good to test our skills and put our skills to the to the to the test as well as. Um, doing some good in the world as well and helping to find uh, missing people and things. So yeah, that's basically how I guess, uh, I, I guess the final thing would be uh, my blog as well. Sometimes I would just uh, do one of these challenges and sort of write up and explain how I did it. And then sometimes after I've pu published how I did something like geolocate a very specific uh, from someone's picture or something like that, someone would, uh, 
give me some feedback about how they did it because there's always more ways more ways than one that you can do that and you always learn from each other and I always uh, yeah find that really useful as well so just publishing stuff and getting it out there you'll get someone who comes and gives you their advice on how they did it so again another learning opportunity yeah so cyber threat intelligence is uh, a different different to OSINT because although a lot of it does involve using OSINT a lot it also evolves a lot more sort of technical understanding and uh, sort of impact potential impact analysis and, and making assessments and things so um, you know one of the more difficult more challenging aspects of working in CTI is that you have to be able to invest it, say if there's a data breach and affecting a uh, large company that your company is a customer of uh, you have to not only figure out everything that happened in that breach and and potentially figure out uh, you know the tactics techniques and procedures of that threat actor that launched that attack and sort of you have to sort of basically uh, assess the impact of of whether if that threat actor targeted you or with the data that they stole could, could be used against you you have to you know come up with all of these uh, analyze all of these different attributes put it together in a report or in a report and then give it to an executive to make a decision basically or or or, or, or like a SOC manager or a cert manager and um, yeah so a lot of the time you you want to be able to be experienced and in, in understand you know basically able to contextualize when something happens um if, if if there's a new data breach tomorrow you want to be able to say you want to be able to tell okay is this really bad for us or is this not too not, not much of a problem for us or is this threat actor is there a likelihood that they could come after us and their way of do, launching attacks would it impact our organization um so you have to know you have to basically be the uh, the voice of reason and um, and truth really, and uh, tr raise the flag or raise the alarms when it's absolutely necessary. So it's uh, it's definitely a, a challenging uh, job, but definitely you know if you like researching threat actors and writing reports about them and and uh, tracking them down, then yeah, it's definitely something I recommend people to get interested in. Um, I think the I guess the only the last thing I will uh, I will promote is uh, I think it's for for organisations that are sort of more interested in learning more about day to day operations of threat actors and and, and cyber criminals and how they can actually you know a attack an organisation or you know you you've heard about the dark web but you're not sure what actually happens on the dark web it's definitely uh, it's definitely becoming the the big thing and and the 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 basically what, what I want to say is like the sort of it's becoming the tip of the spear. You know, a lot of these things are already happening for months before it actually comes around to targeting your organization. So, start using open source intelligence again and and tracking threat actors and what happens in the underground forums and things is uh, is going to be you know the way to fight this stuff um, and. One of the ways you could do that is by taking uh, the upcoming SANS 4589 Cybercrime Intelligence course, where we will dive into how to infiltrate underground forums, how to create threat actor profiles and dossiers, and uh, you know uh, perform all sorts of different types of intelligence um, and to basically understand how cybercriminals operate.